Hi guys, so today we've got the KuCam 8K. I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing and giving you my first thoughts on what I think of the camera now I've actually got it in my hands. Coming right up. Okay, so just wanted to do a quick unboxing. I'm going to swap to the overhead view for this and you can see what comes in the box and yeah, what you get included for the price. I paid 529 for this, so um, that's in pounds, so it'll be about probably about $550, maybe $600. And I pre ordered it, and with that, you got the additional selfie stick bundle free. So I'm not sure what they're doing on this now. I'll try and put a link in the description below to Candal's website. But yeah, they um, I think it's a pretty good price for what it is actually. Um, haven't used it yet, literally. I've had it for about three weeks, haven't unboxed it yet, so I've been waiting to do this, got Christmas out of the way, and now we're gonna get into this. Okay, so as you can see, we've got quite a nice packaging. It's kind of like any Insta360 or Apple or anything like that. And I quite like this gold that you've got on the box. And then if we just open the box up, Inside, we are greeted with the Candale camera. And we've got um, a little thing here telling you what the different um, swipes do on the touch screen. Obviously this comes with a nice big touch screen. So swipe down for settings, swipe left for shooting mode and swipe right for playback. And then swipe up for some other parameter settings. And what I quite like about this is you've got this little tab Lift up the camera, just pop that there for a minute. And then I think if I pull this up, underneath here, you've also got a little um, plastic. One eternity later. Okay, so I just had a quick look in the box. Um, I paused the filming just because I was looking for the protective case, which is a rubber case, which should be on the underside of this. If you take out this little foam piece, there should be a protective case in there, just inside here. But as you can see, it's not there. So that's um, instantly a bit of a negative for me that the quality control of Candale clearly isn't up to much because they have neglected to put one of those protective cases in. Um, I actually saw it on another 360 review video that that's where it was because it's not obvious. Um, but it's not in this one at all. So that's the first thing to note. You should have a protective case under here. It's not here on mine for some reason. It should be a little case that goes essentially around the edge of this. Um, we've got underneath here, we've got the documents. That's your warranty and um, all the user manual and stuff. It's quite hard to get out. In here we've also got a USB-C to USB-C. We've also got a USB-C to USB micro. And then we've got a protective, protective pouch, similar to the Insta360 one. It's kind of a neoprene soft pouch. And then we also have in here a uh, just a lanyard again similar to what Insta360 provide and it's got a little uh, tripod quarter 20 mount there so that's all really nice apart from the lack of the plastic or rubber case that should be in the box because on the side of here it says protective case just down here and it says separately protective cap pouch as well so everything else is there and actually no everything else is not there because I've got a USB-C to micro USB I've got a USB-C to USB-C I don't have a USB-C to USB-A so that's also missing so Candal if you're watching you probably won't be but if you are not impressed so far with the lack of attention to detail in the quality control and packing of your product. So, enough of that. 
So yeah, as you can see on the camera, we've got these nice big lenses, you've got a protective film, let's just peel that off. Got one on either side. Now, first thing to note about this is that the, sorry about the wobbly GoPro, um, camera feels pretty weighty in the hand. It's significantly heavier than the Insta360 or a GoPro, for example. Um, you've got a mode button here, and then the Q button, which I think is a quick menu um, button that you can set up functions on. And then you've got button in the middle here as well. And the mode button is also your power on button. I'm just gonna peel this off. On the side of the device, you've got a USB-C and then you've got a mic in and you've got what looks like um, microphones here. Underneath, you've got the quarter 20 mount and on the other side, you've got your micro USB port, sorry, micro SD card port, I should say. And then again, we've got some um, heat management stuff on the side here. I think that's where the fan is. So let's switch this on. So how long does it take to power up? That's the question. Well, you can hear the fan kick in already. So it didn't take too long to power up. You can see up in the, um, hopefully you'll be able to see on the GoPro, up in the top left, you've got the amount of inbuilt storage so we've got 56.67 gigabytes so I think it comes with 64 gigabytes but obviously the the software takes up a bit of that you've got your power over here and then you've got your record mode and the record settings down here so hopefully the GoPro can focus that if not I'll try and show you on the main camera so down here you've got your record settings, you've got your, your um, remaining memory there, internal memory, and then you've got battery over there. And I'm just gonna put this up to my microphone so you can hear the fan. Hopefully you can hear that. It's, it is fairly loud actually. I understand that the, the fan on this will um, cut out when you're recording. So we'll test that in a minute. And then um, you've got your, your manual settings here. So so you've got, you can set your exposure. You can set um, 8K 30 frames a second or 4K 120. Just trying to work out if that cropped in at all. I don't think it does. And you can scroll around, which is really nice. You can see my messy office. And there's the GoPro recording. If you swipe down, you've got your different modes and settings. So you've got color depth, so put that in 10 bit. You've got, I have to say actually, first impressions of this touch screen is it's uh, better and more responsive than the um, GoPro touch screens. So you've got all your wireless stuff, you got USB, so you can do iOS, mass storage, or Android. Uh, priority, uh, priority memory, okay, so that's whether it will prioritise going to the built-in memory or an SD card. I'll leave it on built-in because I haven't got an SD card in there. Format memory, date and time. So let's just set that. Yeah, this touchscreen is really very good, actually. Um, 
quite impressed with that. It's definitely less laggy than a GoPro at the moment anyway. I like the size of the touchscreen as well. I think that's really nice. Um, and then you've got about the camera, it shows you your firmware version. So that's settings. You've got your screen brightness, which to be honest, I think in this light, I can see it on okay when it's not very bright, but I think you'd want it at least 75% on the brightness if you're outside. I'll have to test that once I get outside with it. Uh, you've also got... Oh, that appears to be not working at the moment. I presume that would be audio settings, or maybe it's if you've got an external mic plugged in. I don't know. That's turning the Wi-Fi on. Uh, right, okay, so you've got your custom modes here which, similar to a GoPro Hero 8, you can add a custom mode. I don't quite understand how you... On this one it appears that you have to do the settings and then add it afterwards, maybe have to check that out in um, in the future so that's your custom modes so that's that was when we swiped down swiping up gave us the various oh okay so yeah so if i if i change the settings and then go to say i change that to daylight then if i swipe down and go to custom that's when you add it and there it is okay so okay that's all cool swipe across and that's your footage so if i just all right so swipe to the left from the right hand side of the screen and you get all your modes up I have to say it this camera is feeling quite hot in my hands on the sides here already and we've already dropped eight percent so that is um, a little bit concerning because I've only been filming probably 10 minutes or so um, certainly not a particularly good sign um, let's just swipe that way so we've got your Q mode so that's your quick All right so if you if you press this button up here, that sets your different quick capture modes, so the custom functions that we were in just now. So I'm not sure how many of those you can have maximum, but it's good to see you can add a few. Uh, you've got video, you've got, I think that must be time lapse or a timed photo, you've got DNG8, which is the, um, where it takes eight single still shots and then um, combines them. You've got something that I can't tap, it's not working yet, which looks like it might be a hyperlapse function possibly, or something for high speed action. And then you've got the the different modes, so the C1, C2, C3, C4. What's interesting to me is if I if I try and add all right, so you've got four of those it seems because I can't add any more. So, yeah, so you've got four custom modes. So that's quite nice. Um, yeah, so far, this um, seems quite a nice interface. And the only thing that's bothering me is quite how hot this is getting, particularly on the side here where the fan is hoping 
So on the side here, it's really warm. And it's really warm on the side here as well. So let's just shoot a little bit of um, 10 bit 8K stuff. So I think if I press this button here, yeah, so the fan has stopped and it's recording. I don't know if the camera picks that up. And what's quite nice is I can pan around the room and that's going to look really overexposed because I'm filming with a light. But yeah, I mean, the quality of the screen is not brilliant. Not sure if I can show you that. It's quite hard to show you on the GoPro. So if I can show you on the main camera, but the quality is kind of okay like it's not not brilliant and I'm, yeah I think it'd be fine it's a little bit pixelated but okay for kind of yeah setting up a shot and working out what you're doing um, and then if we just go back to the overhead view if I stop that yeah, you hear the fan instantly comes back on. So there's definitely a heat management issue with this camera, which is pretty noticeable straight away. I mean, I've only had it on, I don't know, like 15 minutes or so, and it's dropped 12% of its battery. And given most of that time I haven't been recording, um, Let's just go, if we swipe across, there's our file. And we can... Okay, so... So I'm quite interested to see what the audio sounds like when I, when I actually get to edit this. Um, because this is just with the onboard mics, so I'll try that. And then, as you can see, I have got a um, Rode Wireless Go microphone set up at the moment that I'm using for this to film this video. So I will um, see. I'll see if I can plug that into this later, and I'll get some test footage going. But... Okay, so just going to try putting the camera down for a minute and just walking away from it. So if I put it down here and then just walk away. Okay, so I'm now probably about 10 feet away, 12 feet away. So let's see how that sounds, whether it works well with the audio. Here's my cat, Tiger. He's getting involved in the action. Hopefully that's given you a quick, um, quick look at the interface and uh, yeah, my first impressions are that I quite like it, but it does feel pretty heavy. So just go back to the main camera. Yeah, it does feel really heavy um, compared, for example, to the Insta360, which is here. I'm just going to put this down for a minute. So that's the Insta360. I'll just See so if I can point at the light. And for size comparison, that's the difference in size in terms of height. Let's try and get my face out of the way. And if I turn them on their side, that's roughly... Actually, it's probably easier to do it on here on the overhead cam. So, yeah, it's... Um, move that out of the way. Yeah, it's quite a bit bigger. I'd say it's almost a third again in terms of height or length, and then a lot thicker. Probably double the thickness, not quite. Um, and then a bit wider as well. So, and it's yeah, way heavier. I'm going to weigh these, but I reckon it's probably weighs about three times the weight of an Insta 361X. Maybe not quite that much, but I wouldn't be surprised once I weigh it. Um, 
Yeah, in the time I've been talking, it's dropped to 85% battery. The camera can pick that up, which is um, interesting. I, th I think the battery life on this is probably going to be not great, actually. But it is shooting 8K, so... And it has got a big touchscreen. But... Um, yeah, I mean, the only other observations I'd make at this point is the back of the camera looks a little bit like it's got some imperfections on it. But, yeah, there's some imperfections on the back here and just generally around the camera. Given I've literally just got this out of the box, it's not great, actually. So I think quality control for Candown needs improving. Um just I'm going to put the camera to one side because I want to have a look at the other bits that I got which was the box with the um, the selfie stick and the other bits so I'm just going to switch this off for a minute because it does make quite a racket um, let's pop that over there for a minute so yeah the other thing that came with the camera was this box, which is the QCAM 8K um, selfie stick bundle. So in this box, you get your selfie stick, which has the Candel branding. That is very similar in how it operates to the Insta360 ONE X stick. It's also got a quarter 20 mount on the bottom and on the top. It's got the same screw um, and it's a twist, it's a twist lock. So it's extending the same way as the Insta1 does. Uh, in the box, you've also got a phone mount, which I think you can also mount onto the pole. And then this little mounting piece, which also mounts around the pole. And then you can essentially screw this on like so and then that would go on the pole on there so that's quite nice um, also in the box you've got a little mini tripod quality of which is okay it's metal but um, yeah, I, d I just feel like everything is probably a step down from like what you would get with GoPro or Insta360. Um, it's quite it's quite weighty that, to be fair. And then you've got a nice little soft bag for putting everything in. So yeah, overall, so far, uh, I'll just turn that off. Yeah, so overall, so far, I would say I am kind of impressed and kind of feeling a little bit let down with this. Um, not happy that they haven't included stuff that should be in the box in the box, so I'm going to have to contact them about that. So that's been a quick look at the camera, just getting it unboxed and having a quick look around the interface. I think for me, the pros so far are that the touchscreen is really responsive and it's really easy to navigate around. Clearly, I've not upgraded the firmware. I'm not sure if there is an upgrade yet available, but there's things that you can't yet tap and actually get into on the menu. So um, there's modes that aren't unlocked yet. So it's interesting to see when they'll be available and what those modes will be. Um, I think... It seems like they've released this camera um, ahead of time to try and beat Insta360 perhaps and probably to try and get it out before Christmas. So it's, um, it's a bit disappointed that we appear to be kind of beta testers now as consumers. We seem to see more and more firms releasing these cameras which aren't really ready. Um, just to get them out into the public domain and get sales moving. So a little bit frustrated that they've done the same thing with this. Um, 
I'm really interested to try it out and get some test footage. So once I've done that, I'll put up another video and um, yeah, try and get some outdoor footage. I'm taking this to Austria um, when I go snowboarding. Given how heavy it is, I'm not sure how it's going to work on a, on a selfie pole, but I will try and get some footage because I'm also going to be testing the new Insta360 1R there. So um, please do leave comments below with any questions you have about this camera or the Insta360 1R and anything you'd like to see in my future videos about this camera and that camera as well. I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you are thinking about buying the camera, I'll try and put some links in the description below. And um, if I were you, I would probably hold off for the time being and see where we go with the camera in terms of the firmware updates and um, seeing if the price drops a bit. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please do like it and leave a comment below of anything you'd like to see in future videos. And please do subscribe and I will see you in the next video.